This is the G35 laser designator. It is a five milliwatt green laser. And this is the package. It's a very Spartan, but a clean looking and modern looking design on the outside. Let's, but let's see what's inside. Cause that's really the more important thing. We have our user manual here and GL35, it says on there. So I guess green laser 35. I'm, that's just a wild guess on my part, but yeah. Make sure that you read your instructions before using your device here. And it just shows you in clear illustrations how to mount and how to zero your laser here. It's all in English. And we have, let's see here, we have a, uh, we have a battery charger for the, the LiPo battery that comes with it. I'm seeing here we've got our mounting uh, bracket here. And we have a strap for, I'm guessing, for for keeping your wiring nice and clean on your handguard. We have our pressure switch and tail clicky cap. So this is uh, this looks almost exactly the same as the um, flashlight, the tactical weapon light that uh, I reviewed uh, a while back. Same uh, mechanism um, clicky here. So this is from, for, if it's this, if it functions the same, this is on and off and this is momentary. And we have our screw on cap. We have our USB-C cable and we have our laser designator itself. And it is a solid feeling piece. It, it, it does feel very much like a, uh, a weapon light and it has the same form factor. Uh, you have your dial in um, elevation and windage adjustments here and you mount it into your bracket here and you mount this on to your weapon. It's real pretty much like a weapon light and we have some additional screws in here as well for, oh, this these are for mounting onto a um, M-lock rail. So you can convert this to M-lock by unscrewing this mount, which is a Picatinny style, and you unscrew your uh, pressure switch from the Picatinny mount and you can convert it to, uh, to M-lock. That's good. All right, so we got our components here. Next step is to see, let's see if it's, I think the battery must be inside here because I don't see it outside. There we go, and it was, huh, oh, there we go. It wasn't on because there's a little piece of uh, paper inside of here that keeps it, the contacts from touching. So let's just do a quick test, quick function test. Interestingly, the uh, positive is facing out rather than in, but yep, it does function, it does work. It does activate. So we do have some power on our battery. So let's take our next step, let's get it into our mount here. And of course, depending on how in the location you want to mount it onto uh, your device, whether it is a Nerf gun, an airsoft gun, or real steel, um, you'd want to position this either hanging down or riding up on your handguard. It's really up to you, but I'm going to go with the down position and then see if we have enough. Yep, we have enough clearance to get it onto there. And eyeballing it here, and we have our Allen wrench. It's actually a Torx wrench. It's a star wrench here, so we just cinch that down. That's good. That The fact that uh, they included a Torx wrench and not just an Allen wrench means that these can be cinched down much tighter and not worry too much about it stripping the top so that it can withstand more recoil. Of course, you may need to adjust this forward and back depending on the placement of your particular weapon. But as you can see here, even without the pressure switch, so you know, let's just cinch that down. Even without the pressure switch, you can just use the tail clicky to turn it on and off. And if that's fine for you, that's, that's good enough. Or you can swap this out for the pressure switch. And we have our momentary and we have our constant on. So let's pressing the momentary. You do get the laser. And as soon as you let go, it turns off. Or 
you can just use this button, much like the tail click on your tail cap, and there we go. So you would mount this onto your hand guard or uh, um, anywhere that you'd have a Picatinny rail. Or, like I said, you could uh, use the included T-bolts here, the T-nuts, sorry, the T-nuts and attach it via M-lock. So let's do that. Let's get it mounted and take it out to the range and give it a proper test. We're at the range and it is a gorgeous fall day here in the Bay Area. I'm going to set up a bench at 25 yards and my Heckler & Koch G3622 as our test bed. And while I do that, I'd just like to ask you to take a moment and click those like and subscribe buttons. It's absolutely free and it helps this channel grow, but it also helps you because you're taking control of the algorithm. You're telling it that you'd like to see more videos like this instead of whatever is the most watched video on social media unless you prefer cat videos. No judgments. The laser mounts exactly like a weapon light. You screw it onto a pick rail, and generally on your handguard, but you know, anywhere on your rifle really, as long as you have a clear unobstructed path for the laser beam. So attaching the pressure switch here, uh, the, the mounting pad is actually a snap-on, so that's a little bit unusual. Usually you'd, you'd expect to have something that you would either screw on uh, or clamp on, but this one actually you just sort of have to force it once you align uh, your recoil lugs underneath here to uh, your slots in your Picatinny rail. Once you align that, you just sort of have to muscle it on to uh, your pick rail. And it does require a little bit of there we go. We got our pressure plate set up and the on switch works and let's try momentary on and that works too. So to zero the unit you want to project a dot onto a paper target or a blank wall and using the adjustment knobs you want to reposition that dot so that it aligns with it co-witnesses with your iron sights or the crosshairs or reticles of whatever optic you choose to use. Now in practice, it's just like using a red dot or a holosite, you're aiming using the dot. And the advantage of a laser is that anybody with you, your teammate or range buddy, can see what it is you're aiming at. You're designating the target, that's why it's called the laser designator and not a laser aimer. And it's also useful for instructors because you can see what your students are aiming at when they pull the trigger. So overall, not bad. We grouped pretty tightly, just a little bit high of, uh, of uh, where I thought I was aiming here for the uh, center X. So just a little bit of a slight, slight adjustment and we can fix that. So, but it totally does work as an aiming device. So there you go. And that's the G35 laser designator. If you're interested in getting one, you can find product links in my full written review at moondogindustries.com. And before you jump off to that next video, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching. Moondog, out. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please share it on forums, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, MeWe, whatever social media you're on. And if you want to see all of my videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.